Hello! Today I am going to be explaining to you how I tell that this is real fur. This is a piece of raccoon dog fur, which I got from a fellow vegan who thought she was wearing fake fur, but I informed her that it was real, so she agreed to give it to me so I could educate other people on how to tell that it's real fur. I also have this, which <laughs> which is very much harder to show you on because it's black, it's fox fur. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be difficult. But I'm gonna use I'm gonna use this one mainly to teach you how to tell uh, the difference between real and fake raccoon dog fur. Unfortunately, I don't have a uh, a fake fur trim to show uh, the difference between, but I'll include a picture on the side here with an example of fake raccoon dog fur. So this one right here uh, is supposed to imitate this one. And first of all I would like to show you, if you look at this, see how it reflects light. If you look at, you know, the entire thing, see how it's very matte? It's reflecting light very evenly over the whole fur trim. Um, whereas if you look on this on the side, you can see uh, the ends of the hairs. They're very, it looks very shiny and there's like white spots here and there, like individual hairs reflecting more light than others. Uh, which is a very common thing of fake fur uh, made from plastic. Whereas with real raccoon dog fur, it, it is very even uh, it has very even light reflection uh, over the whole fur trim. <laughs> and secondly, I would like to show you how this moves. See when I do this, how it like... See how there's this wavy motion? Like very smooth. And you'll see this when people walk with real fur. It like... Yeah, it does this very smoothly up and down as they walk. Whereas, with fake fur, uh, it's not going to move as much. It's a lot more static. So obviously it's going to move a little, but you'll not see this, this right here, this very smooth wavy motion with a fake fur. Um, Another way to tell is by looking at the ends of the hair strands here. If you see this, you see how they become thinner and thinner towards the ends. They end like very pointy, uh, almost all the hairs. Um, that means it's real, because with fake fur, uh, all the hair strands, uh, they have the th same thickness all the way out to the end. They don't get thinner and thinner towards the ends like this. So if you are close, that is something you can tell by. And then, if we look closer between all these hair strands, you can see how there is this very, like, fluffy isolation. It's not regular hair strands, it's more like some woolly, uh, thing. It's not like, they're not even straight, they're very, like, d -d 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 wavy and stuff. Yeah, you can see this. Like, we got the long hair strands, and then we got this in between that, which is the isolation, which keeps the animal warm. Um, and this is something that only real fur has. I have never seen fake fur trim or any fake fur that tries to imitate this isolation. Um, and if we were to remove all the isolation on this one, um, it would become, it would look a lot <laughs> there would be a lot less volume because the majority of the volume of this is made up of uh, the isolation. Um, and that isolation also does a very good job of keeping the actual hair strands, you know, separated from each other. So if we look at, you know, all the hairs here, you can see how they're not clumping together. Like all the hair strands, these ones with the black ends, um, they're very evenly separated and they're not clumped together, uh, which is something that very often happens with uh, fake fur, because fake fur doesn't have this isolation, 
uh, and it's a different material, of course, plastic, uh, as opposed to actual hair. Uh, so it tends to, uh, you know, create clumps of hairs, um, and very often it's even like they're even pointing in different directions, and they also tend to create like gaps, like between the clumps of hairs, so you can see down between uh, all the hairs, and you can see that there's no isolation in between there. And then, uh, a way you can tell, which is much harder, you won't be able to do this on any stranger, won't be able to do this from a distance, like you would have to inspect it very closely in order to be able to do that. But if we try to separate all these hairs and look at, you know, the bottom where it's attached, which is very hard with the real fur because it's so dense, um, so I don't know if you can see this, but I'm gonna try to show you here. Um, see how there's like, there's just small holes, you know, the hair sacs, where the hair, hairs are attached. Whereas with fake fur, uh, it's gonna be this like, uh, this crisscross, you know, texture, textile texture, uh, and in between there, the hairs are coming out of, but with real fur you'll only see this, you'll only have these, uh, you know, very small holes which are, you know, the hair sacs where the hairs are attached. Uh, and you'll notice like how hard it is to look at the bottom of this because it's so dense because it's real. Now, if you are still very uncertain, the last thing you can do is you can take one of these hairs off the fur trim and burn it. Uh, and you'll see immediately if it's real or fake. See how, you know how real hair reacts to fire, right? Immediately when it touches fire it just it shrivels up together and you can smell it. Real hair kind of smell, it smells like real hair. It doesn't have a very strong smell to it. Uh, it smells like hormones actually or something maybe uh, whereas if it's plastic it's slowly gonna kind of melt it's not gonna have this very super quick reaction uh, and if you smell after you have it you know burned it it's gonna smell very strongly because burnt plastic has a very strong uh, toxic smell to it so so hopefully you can see this well. Uh, this is what the hair looks like after I just touched it with fire for not even a second. It just immediately shriveled up. Uh, and that is what real hair does. As where with plastic it's a much more slow reaction. And yeah, it'll you'll smell plastic because it smells it smells really bad when you burn it, so here, I'll try to show you when I do it again. There's the hair. Here comes the fire. Bam. See that? It just immediately, there's a very fast reaction. Uh, and yeah, you can smell. You can smell that it's hair. Because if it was plastic, it would smell a lot different and it would smell a lot stronger. And that pretty much sums it up for raccoon dog fur. Uh, another one that you can pretty much easily tell in the same way is coyote fur. Uh, and you'll often see that because they have a Canada Goose uh, patch on the shoulder of those jackets. Uh, which in almost all cases means it's coyote fur. And then we have fox fur, like this one. Which is much harder to tell. Uh, it does have some sort of isolation in the same way, although it's much, much harder to tell the difference between the isolation and the actual hairs. But you'll still see the pointy hairs. And I don't want to touch this one now because it will fuck up the light. But uh, you'll see, still see how it has like the pointy ends on the hairs. Uh, and you'll see how they don't really clump together, the hairs. They're very evenly spread out. It's very dense. You can still see how it like moves easily uh, but it's gonna be a lot harder to tell when it's black like this uh, because you'll have to be a lot more you'll, ha you'll have to be a lot closer to uh, actually see the details but 
yeah, once you figure out how to tell from the other ones, it's going to be a lot easier to uh, identify real uh, fox fur as well. And then of course we also have mink fur, which reflects light very much like plastic, so that one is much harder. Uh, it's very hard for me myself to tell the difference. I'm assuming most of the coats that look like mink coats that I see are actual mink fur, but I'm not sure. Um, because I don't really know how to tell the difference. I don't know how many fake mink fur coats there are, so I'm not as good when it comes to mink fur, because uh, first of all, the hairs are much shorter, so they don't... Uh, you can't tell by how they move around when the person wearing the fur is walking. Uh, you can't tell by how it reflects light, because it looks like plastic. It's very shiny. Um, and it doesn't really, you can't really see isolation either, um, in the same way as with the uh, raccoon dog fur. Um, so yeah, it's, it's much harder to tell with mink fur, but it, you know, it's gonna be brown usually, and it's gonna be a whole coat, so. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, think that's it for this video. Um, I really hope this helps you in telling the difference between real and fake fur, so you can easily identify it on the streets, uh, you know, and confront people um, who are wearing real fur. But trust me, once you, once you look at it enough, once you see the differences enough times, it, it, the differences is very obvious, because for me, I can tell, uh, in the vast majority of cases, I can look at it from 10 meter distance and immediately see if it's real or fake. It is very obvious once you know what to look for, so... Yeah, just think about all the things I mentioned, and just look at enough fur. Maybe go into a store that sells fur and look at them closely yourself. Uh, look at them close up, and yeah, eventually it's gonna be it's gonna be very easy to tell the difference in the vast majority of cases. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope this helped you. Um, peace out.